Hey you doing? I'm Callan and this is Slapped Ham. Today we're talking about some really weird unsolved mysteries. From the curse of the Bell Witch to a talking mongoose that seemed to thrive on town gossip. Join us as we take a look at some of the most perplexing unsolved mysteries throughout history. And before we get into it, remember to hit that subscribe button for more awesome creepy content just like this. The case of Travis Walton has been a source of controversy between ufologists, skeptics and law enforcement since it first became known to the public in 1975. On the night of November 5th, 1975, Travis Walton, along with the rest of the logging crew that he worked with, were on their way home when they saw an intense light just over the hill on the forest road they were on. As they drew near, the entire crew witnessed a strange disc hovering over the road and shining a light down on the ground below. Walton exited the truck to get a closer look, but decided after his initial approach that it wasn't such a good idea. Before he could return to the truck, he was knocked down to the ground, apparently by a greenish blue light that had been issued from the disc. His fellow crew members left in a panic, but they soon returned to where Walton had fallen. They searched for him, but he was nowhere to be found. Travis Walton was missing and would remain so for almost a week. A massive search for Walton took place, but there was no sign of him anywhere. His co-workers came under suspicion, with the local police officers thinking that the loggers had killed Walton, either by accident or during an argument that had taken place earlier in the day. The logging crew was asked to take a polygraph test, and with the exception of one individual who refused to take it due to a criminal background, they all passed. Five days after he had disappeared, Travis Walton made a phone call from a nearby town. When he was picked up, he was disoriented and thought he had only been missing for a couple of hours. The story that he told was a fantastic one. Walton claimed to have been abducted by aliens. He also took a polygraph test and while he failed the first one, he passed the two additional tests that he later took. Travis Walton's alien abduction is one of the best documented and well-known cases in history. Known as the most haunted house in Britain, Borley Rectory has a long history of tragedy and paranormal activity. It's believed that the rectory is haunted by the ghosts of a monk and a nun who lived in the area in the 1300s. Legends state that a Benedictine monastery once stood in the area, and that a monk that resided there had a relationship with a nun from a nearby convent. The affair was discovered and the monk was executed, and the nun was supposedly bricked up in the convent walls. The rectory was known for prolific poltergeist activity as well as ghostly sightings, cold spots, disembodied voices, and strange messages scrawled on the walls. While living in the rectory, Eric Smith and his wife contacted famous paranormal investigator Harry Price in the hopes of receiving some help with the ghostly activity in their home sometime around 1928. Price conducted experiments and observed ghostly phenomena, but the Smiths moved out of the rectory in 1930, no longer willing to share their home with its ghostly inhabitants. Reverend Lionel Foister and his wife Mary Ann moved into the rectory in 1930 along with their daughter. The paranormal activity seemed to increase, with a particular focus on Mary Ann. Bells could be heard ringing, windows were broken, and Mary Ann was snatched from her bed. Cryptic messages were found written on the walls and seemed to be addressed to Mary Ann. The Foisters left the rectory in 1935, making it available once again for Harry Price, who rented it for one year. Price placed advertisements in the newspaper for individuals willing to take part in a year-long investigation of the property. He eventually wrote a book about the project called The Most Haunted House in England. Unfortunately, the rectory was destroyed by fire in 1939. The grounds are still considered to be a hotspot of paranormal activity, however, making it a go-to location for paranormal investigators. The Bell Witch Haunting is one of the most infamous cases in haunted history. It's captured the imagination and curiosity of countless investigators, historians, and even skeptics, and it's still unexplained today. While the original farmhouse is no longer standing, a replica can be found on the property near the place where the original homestead once stood. The Bell Witch Cave, thought to be a portal between this world and the next, can also be visited by appointment, and paranormal investigators as well as tourists report activity even today. 
Paranormal activity was first noted on the Tennessee farm in 1817, when John Bell, the family patriarch, saw a strange dog-like creature on his property. He fired a shot at the creature but missed. This was the beginning of a full-scale psychic attack. Soon the Bell family was plagued with a wide variety of paranormal activity. Doors slammed, bedding was yanked off those who were sleeping, and family members were stuck with pins. Soon a disembodied voice was heard claiming to be Kate Batts, a local woman that John Bell had once had a dispute with. Old Kate, as she was commonly known, had a particular hatred for John Bell. He was afflicted with strange symptoms that included the swelling of his tongue and throat, and the spirit went out of her way to humiliate him whenever she could. Old Kate also focused a good deal of negative attention on Betsy Bell. The young teen had her hair pulled and was slapped across the face by unseen hands. Unlike Betsy and John, Lucy Bell, Betsy's mother and wife to John, was a favourite of the Bell Witch. Old Kate materialised fruit and nuts for Lucy, and it was said that Lucy was even gifted a handful of straight pins. Eventually, the attention that John Bell received from the Bell Witch was his undoing. In 1820, he became seriously ill and eventually died. It was believed that the spirit poisoned him when a strange vial of black liquid was found by his bedside. A dose of the liquid was given to the family cat, which promptly died. After John Bell's death, the paranormal activity at the farm seemed to die off. Old Kate did put in a final appearance, however, stating that she would return to the descendants of the Bells in 100 years. The origin of the spirit remains a mystery even today. Jeff the Talking Mongoose, also known as the Dalby Spook, first appeared in 1931. This unusual spirit took up residence with James, Margaret and Voiry Irving on a small farm that they owned in Cashin's Gap near the hamlet of Dalby on the Isle of Man. Initially, the spirit seemed to live in the walls of the farmhouse, emitting scratching sounds, squeaks and other animalistic noises, leading the Irvings to believe they had a rodent problem. But as time went on, it was going to become clear that the problem wasn't a rat, but a feisty spirit who apparently took the shape of a mongoose. It wasn't long before the spirit picked up the ability to speak by observing the Irving family. The Irvings began to hear smacking noises along with groans and unintelligible whispers. Eventually, the ghost found his voice and introduced himself, declaring that his name was Jeff and that he was a mongoose that had been brought over from India. Soon, the ghost was stealing food, sleeping in Voiri's room and gathering local gossip about nearby neighbours to report to the family. The Irvings even claimed to have seen the furry spirit, and supposedly Voiri was bitten by Jeff. Jeff's story frequently appeared in local newspapers during the 1930s, and his case was investigated by paranormal researchers. In 1945, Margaret and Voiri sold the farm after James Irving passed away. Leslie Graham purchased the property and laid a claim to have shot and killed a mongoose. This animal was black and white, however, and Voiri stated it wasn't Jeff, who was smaller and golden yellow in colour. No solid explanation has ever been put forth to explain Jeff's existence, leaving the question of who or what Jeff really was unanswered. Before we get to that number one spot and take a look at what is surely one of the most mysterious public events in recorded history, remember to hit that subscribe button and turn on channel notifications. That way you'll be up to date with all our latest content. On October 13, 1917, an event occurred that has baffled scientists, skeptics and historians while simultaneously thrilling and uplifting true believers. On this day, thousands of people would witness what they would consider a miracle. The witnesses weren't just the faithful. They included reporters, scientists and skeptics, many who bore witness to the same activity that the faithful saw. It all began in May 1917 when three shepherd children, Lucia, Jacinta and Francisco, were visited by a vision of the Virgin Mary. Only the oldest child, Lucia, could actually hear the Virgin speak, and Mary informed Lucia that she would appear at the same time on the 13th of each month for the next six months. The children informed their parents and soon word had spread to villagers who passed on the news to others. Fatima shortly became host to pilgrims and the curious on the 13th of each month. Visitors listened raptly as Lucia repeated the messages that the Virgin delivered to her. It was the Virgin Mary's final visit that was the most astounding. 
Lucia claimed that the Virgin had informed her that on her final visit she would produce a miracle for all to witness. At around noon on October 13, 1917, thousands of people gathered to await the miracle. A gentle rain had fallen all morning and the skies were still heavy with clouds. Lucia received her final prophecy from the Virgin Mary, who then lifted her hands to the sky. Suddenly, the clouds parted and the crowd witnessed what appeared to be the sun spiralling around in the sky, while radiating vibrant colours. At first, the crowd was thrilled with the spectacle, but then it seemed as if the sun was plummeting to earth. They grew frightened, with many kneeling in the mud to pray for mercy. Eventually, the sun returned to its rightful place, leaving the crowd of onlookers stunned. According to news reports, the event lasted approximately 10 minutes, but to some it seemed much longer. There's been much speculation about what really happened that day. Many believe that it was a legitimate miracle given to the people in order to restore their faith. Others believe that it was a type of mass hysteria or shared hypnosis. Some experts believe that because different people in the crowd had experiences unique to their perception, with some individuals seeing nothing at all, that the explanation is purely psychological. Regardless, the church officially recognised the miracle of the sun as a legitimate miracle on October 13, 1930. Well, that's the end of another episode. Thank you so much for watching. Now, in the comment section below, let us know which one of these stories you thought was the weirdest, and can you give us a reasonable explanation for any of these cases? As always, hit that upward-facing thumb because it really helps us out. And that's it for me. I'll see you all next time.